what we have here is a tennis racket style bug zapper. Uh, used to kill flies and what have you, by you wave it around, hopefully they, they hit this and they get a massive electric shock which fries them instantly. Uh, principle of operation is quite simple really, it would be like the bug zappers you see in takeaways and food preparation areas. Uh, they have a light that attracts the fly um, and there's two, two or three meshes, um, one positive, the other two would be negative or vice versa. Uh, close enough together to allow a fly or a small insect to short them out, but far enough apart to prevent arcing. And the uh, fly gets in, makes a contact between the positive and neutral mesh, and a little spark, a little crack, dead fly. Probably the similar sort of uh, method of operation here, except instead of a light to attract the flies, you have to go waving it around like a loony, trying to catch it. And be like, pretend to be. Was it John McEnroe, you cannot be serious, or was it Bjorn Borg? You cannot be serious. No, anyway. um, yeah, so let's see, how does it work? Now, the packaging said don't stick metal in here to uh, short it out and cause sparks, but who listens to packaging? Because packaging can't speak, so of course you can't listen to it. Little button here to switch it on and off. Oh, ah. Interesting. So I'm assuming there's a capacitor inside here and that holds a charge because, um, you know, two 1.5 volt AA batteries is not going to generate a charge unless there's some sort of ramping up circuitry involved. There's a spark, a charge, sorry, there's two AA batteries ain't going to generate a charge high enough to cause sparking and arcing unless there's some ramping up circuitry involved. So, so I'm just curious about something. If I uh, switch it on. Switch it off. Ah, see that? So even though I've switched it off, there's still a slight charge and I get sparking. But if I switch it on, it's going to often wait a few more seconds. Ah. So that leads me to believe that there is a capacitor in here and there's also a discharge resistor taking the charge out when you switch it off. So let's take it apart and have a look. I think the first thing I will do be sensible. Let's take the batteries out. Some people don't mind getting electric shocks. I do. We've got a mains voltage shock during the week, which is quite stupid. Um, we've got a thing we call it the rotato potato, but it's one of these air fryers that you um, use as a halogen light to a tiny amount of oil to cook to cook food. So what you do is you cut your chips up, put in a spoonful of oil, and uh, turn this thing on. It goes up on its side starts rotating the chips with a little bit of oil and you get oh, pretty decent chips out of it made by a company called Breville however I had it sit, uh, we were also using the kettle a lot for some reason and uh, the plug was in the steam of the kettle so although it wasn't dipped in water the steam of the kettle was uh, engulfing it so when I went to plug it in the slight the sort of film of moisture on the outside of the plug actually made a connection with the mains it actually uh, managed to violate the plugs, the sanctity of the plug, and I got a bit of a mains voltage shock, 50 megahertz. It wasn't, no, it only hurt my hand, but it was enough for me to go, mm. and so it serves as a lesson to people that that is why you got to keep your plugs dry. <laughs> Even steam can do cause you problems. So what do you have here? Uh, that definitely looks like a big capacitor. Power switch, and there's some sort of transformer there. <coughs> Let me see if I can take this out. Well, that's a very soft screw. I do not like that at all. I had a bit of a jump there, a jump cut there to account for the fact that I ran out of space on my phone. I've got the Galaxy Edge, uh, Galaxy S6 Edge Plus. I don't recommend it. Good software, but the construction of the phone is terrible. The screen breaks very easily and very expensive to replace. But anyway, that's just my opinion. Anyway, so as I was saying, yes, this uh, transformer has six connectors, and there's no markings on it. So, but I'm going to confirm this later, and I'll put it up on screen here. But I think what we have here is a... What was that? A transformer with a, a feedback loop, primary loop, and a secondary loop, or winding, some people would call it, or... So what happens is the power goes into the transistor into the base, 
and it goes into the primary loop. But that then causes the transistor to close, which re-diverts the power to the feedback loop. And vice versa. So you've got like a cheap oscillator you know, going on there, creating an AC current. I'll put up a diagram of the, uh, the circuit up once I've confirmed that that is what is happening. And it comes out here. So we've got the two output terminals of this uh, transformer. Which remember, has this transformer has three windings instead of two. So this is the second. The secondary winding output will be here, and it goes into what a fairly classical voltage multiplier. I think it's called a Jenkins circuit or a Jenkins circuit. I'll again, I'll confirm it. And that works by. Uh, Having a series of capacitors. Are they capacitors? Yes, they're capacitors. They kind of look like varistors. Um, going into this. So you've got a series of capacitors and diodes. So effectively what you're having is a one-way push. That, that one capacitor gets charged. But can, and then it pushes into the next capacitor. Which uh, when the diode stops the electricity flowing back. So the charge is just pushing one way. So that's how you ramp up your voltage. It's a very simplistic view. Way of explaining it. But... Anything on there? Maybe on the other side. You can't really see it, but it does say two kilovolts. So this capacitor is quite a beefy capacitor. CB something. So yeah, what's happening is, um, on this side of the, well it's actually an L-shaped part of this transformer, you have an oscillator circuit turning the DC into AC, basically. It's not smooth, it's not particularly pretty or clean AC, but it's AC nonetheless, through this cheap oscillator circuit. Then comes out of the transformer, ramped up, oh, I've broken that, and into this uh, voltage multi multiplier circuit. Which eventually the charge gets collected in this big capacitor here. Now you've got the two wires coming out, so that those two wires must be the outside um, meshes. And that is the middle mesh. And what's happening is when a fly comes along, shows it shorts the circuit, and the, the capacitor discharges immediately. And I think one of the things I like about this kind of a circuit is if it wasn't for the LED, you could leave it switched on permanently. Because once the, the charge is built up here on the capacitor, no more current flows. Where is it going to go? You just have to wait for something to short out the meshes. That will discharge the capacitor and the charging process will start again. So you could even just take, if you were to actually just leave, you know, take the button, you know, replace the button, short it out. Um, put it, put this up against the light. You know, a pretty decent fly zapper that would just sit there and just keep attracting flies and killing them. But um, yeah, quite simple, really. Uh, oscillator goes into a transformer. Transformer ramps up the uh, oscillator. Sorry, converts DC to AC. That goes into a transformer. The transformer ramps it up, and then it's ramped up even more using this um, voltage multiplier circuit. Ends up in this big capacitor which holds the charge. Something shorts it out. Pfft, zap. So what I'm going to do is I want to just do a few voltage measurements. But I've broken this wire. So I'm just going to come back in a second after I've fixed it. And we're back. Um, I just used this patch cable rather than solder it back in again because it's very fiddly. So what I want to do is uh, depress the button. So to cheat. I'm just going to use the, the crocodile clips from my bench power supply. Which is not plugged in so it won't cause any problems there we go, now it's on so I'm going to just test the voltage coming off the transformer I'm actually not going to test the voltage coming off the big capacitor because I don't want to wreck my uh, multimeter so, change it down, so I want to test these two see what's coming off here So 50 volts, 50, 55 volts is what it's saying.
yeah, it's a significant ramping up. So you've taken uh, three volts, going into the, it's been turned into AC, put into the transformer, coming out at around 50 volts, and then you've got this uh, ramp the uh, subsequent voltage multiplications circuits. I just I'm gonna, should I even dare? I'm going to try it. Nope, didn't like the sound of that. <laughs> Heard a buzz there. So, uh, yeah, let's not go there. So, yeah, um, there you go. Simple enough in operation. I just zapped myself. Damn it. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen. So, uh, yeah, that was quite painful. Got myself there. Ah. Yeah, it's like a really bad static shock that you would get, like, from you know, when you've been wearing the wrong kind of shoes and dragging your feet over Axminster carpet, and then you go and touch something rubber or something grounded, and you get, ah. Anyway, three euros. Not a nice little bit of kit. Um, I was just actually wondering, is actually the components on this might actually be worth more than the, the device itself, if you were to buy them separately. Oh, anyway. Um, that is how a bug zapper works. Bye-bye.